Hey guys, it's Danny Son here. In my previous video, I discussed embracing my passion and utilizing multiple streams of income instead of just one. Now, let's start with the uh, utilizing multiple streams of income. For those of you who have, who have done your research, this won't be anything you know startlingly new. What I would like to do is to um, have more than uh, one source of income. Now, I don't mean uh, getting another job or anything like that. I want to utilize passive streams of income, such as royalties and things like that. Now, in order to do this, I've uh, set up uh, two different things. I have, first off, set up my website with uh, advertisements. Um, I only made like less than a buck. I think it's like 54 cents or so. That's just in the beginning, so I'm not, you know, too worried about it. I would like for it to uh, become a uh, big source of income for me, but. You know, if it's not doing that well at the moment, I'll just have to uh, retool it. And once I become, you know, more well known on the internet, then it'll uh, be a much better source of income because the more people that come to my site, the more possible chances of them clicking on the ads. And plus, it took, you know, guys like Steve Pavlina like about a year and a half to two years. Some people even wait to like five years, which is, you know, ages in uh, internet terms, to uh, put up any kind of advertisement or donation buttons or anything like that. I do have a donation button on my website, though. I should uh, probably uh, make better use of it, though, because I haven't gotten any donations yet, either. Yeah, utilizing multiple streams of income, such as donations, advertisement space, and also writing, royalties. And uh, which leads me to uh, embracing my passion, which one of my passions is uh, writing. I would like to write young adult fiction, which is, you know, really a lucrative uh, niche in uh, the uh, writing world right now. And also I've, you know, I enjoy that kind of reading that kind of stuff. I mean, I remember back in like seventh, eighth grade, you know, reading, you know, stuff like Goosebumps, Animorphs. I think even back then the Harry Potter series was starting to get underway, although I didn't start to read that until, you know, way later, until I think after the first movie came out is when I started to read it. But I did notice it, though. I did see, like, the little posters and the books up, but never really got into it until, like I said, after the uh, first or second movie. Yeah, it was books like that that really, you know, just inspired me as a person. And they were just, you know, fun to read. I'd totally, like, spend a day or even a week just reading them. Now, I'm not, you know, much of a speed reader. I mean, I could read fast if I want to, but, you know, I actually like to kind of, you know, enjoy reading those kinds of things. So I just kind of, you know, read at like a speaking pace. I don't just like, eh, you know, just go through it like, you know, my friend Ariopolis does. He just, you know, speed, speed reads through the whole thing. But, you know, I like to sit back, kind of take my time. Now, as far as writing goes, I've, uh, well, I've been writing all my life, obviously, you know, in school and things like that, but I didn't really, really get into it until I'd say probably in high school. I mean, I did some things in, like, middle school, but it wasn't, you know, it was just, like, little one-off projects and things like that. But in high school, that was uh, my creative peak. I was writing uh, little, like, ideas for stories, ideas for games, little designs for tables for said games, just, you know, a whole bunch of ideas. So it wasn't just stories. It was also, uh, like, uh, not really merchandise, but actual, like, tangible products, like tables and things like that. Getting back to writing, I wrote, like, a ton of ideas down, took little pieces of paper, which is what I usually wrote them down on, just, like, little scrap pieces of paper, and uh, put them in, like, a little, like, notebook type thing, or, like a trapper sort of thing, binder. That's the word I'm looking for, is binder. Put them in a binder, and I, uh, I've always had them. I kept them with me even in college, just in case I got an idea. Write down a piece of paper, like a 3x5 uh, index card, slap it in there, and go on my merry little way. But since I wanted to take writing a bit more seriously, as more of like a career option, as opposed to just jotting down little ideas all the time, I've decided to uh, reopen the notebook, look through some of my old ideas, and see if I can come up with uh, any stories. And uh, I'm positive I can. There's just so much material there. I mean, I've, I could probably write, you know, 10, 15 books, well, at least 10, easy. I want to focus on uh, one idea at a time because I don't want to put out all this stuff at once because, you know, I want this to be a sustaining source of income. I want to you know, put out a book, you know, let it sell, let it sell, and then, you know, write another book, put it out, let it sell, let it sell. Obviously, these books will sell even, you know, after their release and after they've, you know, commercially peaked. But I just want to, like, slowly put out my material so it doesn't look like, you know, I'm shoving a whole bunch of stuff down people's throats. And also, you know, just to generally pace myself because I don't want to burn out. I don't want to, you know, write ten books in a row and then just be like, fuck, I've got nothing else, man. I, I can't write anymore. 
so I want to pace myself. Right now I'm working on, uh, I think, two or three different little ideas for books. One's called Three, which is based off of uh, three American boys who are uh, living by themselves in Japan after being adopted by an older couple after their parents passed away. And the eldest decided to take in the uh, other two brothers and decided to raise them on his own. That's That's got some good little points to it. I've also got, I've also got uh, the Pearl Lantern, which is about this Pearl Lantern is about a guy who, uh, it reminds me, I was watching a little bit of Yu Yu show when I thought of this idea, but it's about a guy who, uh, he dies, and, uh, he accidentally, uh, through, uh, he requests that he's, uh, when you die in, uh, my book, you are granted, uh, one last little wish. You can't wish for the destruction of things, or, you know, the ill will towards people, and you can't wish yourself back to life, or at least not permanently. But this guy wished to, uh, fulfill some of his life goals. This wish granted him temporary life until he uh, completes his goals. Now the catch is, this wish, you are uh, given a period of uh, a year when, uh, to complete your wish, and if you don't complete it within a year, both you and your assigned uh, spirit reaper, or soul reaper, like Shinigami type, type person, are uh, sentenced to purgatory for all eternity. Yeah, I thought it's a really interesting story, so this guy's only got a year to do everything that he's always wanted to do. So I think it's I think it's gonna be you know a really good story. Also, I've got another one. Uh, I just came up with this idea like a couple days ago. It's called uh, kind of debating between like the phone or the caller. Probably come up with a, you know a snazzier title later. But it's about you know a young boy who uh, gets uh, these mysterious calls from. Uh, now the guy doesn't actually speak. He, whenever the boy answers the phone from this mysterious caller, he uh, is able to listen into uh, conversations. It could be conversations, you know, between his parents and like somebody else, or it could be uh, also people from the dead. They're not really speaking to him directly. It's just like you're kind of listening in on a conversation. It's like you're almost like snooping, but he's on the phone doing it. So nobody can hear him speak, and uh, but he can hear everybody else talk. And they're not talking towards him directly, they're just kind of like in conversation. It's like if you stuck a little, like a mini cassette recorder in a room and just hit record. Nobody knows that the cassette recorder is there, but it's still picking up uh, whatever everybody else is saying. Yeah, I got that idea from uh, one of my brother's friends. He accidentally uh, called the house. He didn't, you know, hear me. I was kind of like, hello? Hello? And, you know, I could hear the whole conversation between him and uh, his counselor. It took me forever to figure out you know who it was though but I, th I thought at first it was just some kind of like prank caller so I kind of went along with it because I mean I had nothing better to do at that time so I just kind of put the phone on the speaker ate some food and uh, just listened in I couldn't hear everything but you know it was kind of fun and uh, those are my three main story ideas that I'm currently working on right now I think I'm gonna try to get uh, three out first then uh, either Pearl Lantern or uh, The Caller after that, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, as far as publishing goes, that's something uh, my stepdad brought up, you know. Obviously, you know, I'll need money if I want to publish this in, like, a you know, hardback or paperback form. I talked to a, a local author about, you know, how she got the word out for that, and uh, she basically had uh, some lady, you know, she'd go to, like, book sales and things like that, and uh, she'd always, you know, promote this particular author's book. You know, she says, you know, if I buy these books or X amount of books, you know, will you sell this local author's book? And normally they'd say yes, and she's even on the front page of uh, our local paper. I thought that was really nice. But as far as actually physically publishing the book, I didn't really get too much info on that. But what I want to do is, you know, look around at uh, some publishing companies. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, major, but just something that'll publish, like, you know, a first-time author. If it does cost money to actually publish the thing, even if it's a limited run, then what I'll do is I'll first uh, publish it as an ebook, put it up on my website, and uh, sell it that way. Once it, you know, generates enough buzz and it, you know it sells a decent amount, then I'll use that money to uh, put it in like hardback and paperback form. And you know, by that time, all the other books that I release, I should have some kind of publishing deal, or I should at least be financially able to uh, publish my next book with uh, very little problem. That's what I wanted to talk with you guys about today. Later on, I will discuss uh, what's going on with John. So uh, I'll see you guys then. Bye.